Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elect.com, your industrial automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, we've done it all for over 30 years. If you have any questions, make sure you give us a call. Today's video, we're continuing the series on the SVX 9000 drive by Eaton. We're going to be covering how to wire a speed potentiometer to the input of the drive so that we can control the speed. For those of you who don't know what a speed pot is, it's one of these little knobs here. So when we turn it up and down, the speed will change. So let's go ahead and get it wired and get started. So the analog inputs are actually shown right in the wiring diagram for the basic application, which we set up in our previous video. And it's under terminals one, two, and three in our variable frequency drive. Now terminal one is just a plus voltage. So that's gonna go to our speed pots plus voltage reference. Number two is our analog input one plus. That's our actual analog input reference. So that's the one that changes from zero to 10 volts. And number three is our analog input one minus or our common or ground. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like actually on the drive. If you see here, I've already pre-wired this unit so that we can look at the wire colors and we can look at the terminal numbers as well. These three wires are pretty standard on almost every speed potentiometer you might have. So this is coming from my speed pot into terminals one, two, and three, as we discussed. And one, I used a red wire for my plus voltage. Two, I used a white wire for my reference voltage. And three, I used a black wire for my common. And you'll have to look at your particular speed potentiometer to find out which is which. But when you purchase a speed potentiometer, it actually tells you which one is your plus voltage, which one is your reference, and which one is your common. So as long as these three wires correlate with those three on your speed pot and you wire them this way, then we are technically set up for our speed pot. And I can slide this right back in here into the drive. And at that point, I have completely configured my speed pot. The great thing is, is we don't actually need to do any program because in the previous video, we already set this up for the basic application. So when we're in remote control, we'll be able to control the speed right from the speed pot. Okay, so now that our wiring is complete, let's go ahead and apply power to the drive. And what we're gonna do next is there's two different control modes on a variable frequency drive. There's a local control, which lets you run from the keypad. And then there's a remote control, which can let you run from the terminal strip and your speed pot. Now in the previous video, we were controlling everything from the keypad. But in this one, since we want to use our speed pot, we have to switch into remote control. So we're going to press the local remote button, and then we're going to see the flashing remote light, and we're going to press enter to confirm. Once the remote light is completely turned on, now the drive is actually looking at the terminal strip for both its start command and its speed reference. Now, for those of you who've been paying attention to the previous two videos, this may throw kind of a curveball at you because we actually haven't wired a start command to this drive yet on the terminal strip. We're actually gonna be doing that in the next video, but I've pre-wired it to this selector switch for demonstration pur purposes of this speed pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the drive. And then at this point, I can turn my speed pot to get my speed to go up. If I press the right arrow key or the left arrow key, I can scroll through my monitoring variables, see my temperature and my current, my output frequency, which is my output speed, and as I turn the speed pot, I can actually see that go up and down. Now I've also pre-wired this for forward and reverse. So I'm gonna turn off my forward command and turn on my reverse command and the motor runs in the opposite direction, the speed of my speed pot. So the speed pot doesn't care what direction I'm going in. The speed pot just gives me a speed reference. And when we set up the uh, start stop control in the next video, we're gonna actually talk about how do I start forward? How do I start reverse? and there's a lot of different ways to actually do that. So that's all there is to this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or swing by our website at precision-elect.com. We're your industrial automation service center, drives, motors, controls. We've done it all for over 30 years. We do many of these SVX 9000 drives, including repair. We do, we do right now we have about 30 of them in our facility for repair. And they can be anything from the smaller ones all the way up to the massive cabinet drives. So if you need any help, just let us know. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.